What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and uh, I'm back with another kind of, this is sort of a, a weird sort of thing, it's kind of like a piston engine, uh, you know like this piston engine here, except I was thinking about making a train of some sort and I was thinking you know I really want to make like a steam train but I was looking up and I was thinking one of the biggest problems with making a steam train in Scrap Mechanic is you need to reverse the direction of the engine and so with a normal engine we kind of cheat a little bit because this isn't really a four-cylinder car engine where it goes two up, two down. It's sort of, you know, a one, 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 one timing. So they just continuously rotate the beam always in the same direction. And if we wanted to change that rotation, I think all we'd have to do is reverse all these angles here in the middle. And if we did that, oh no, oh yeah, and then of course we'd have to reverse all these sensors too and have all the sensor inputs reversed or two sets of sensor inputs, but regardless, we could then reverse the direction of the uh, of the travel on this. But I was thinking, you know, the steam engines have been around for a while, and so there's got to be ways that they've been doing this in real life, especially back in, you know, the, the early days of the steam engine, and there's no way they were doing it with any sort of computers or sensors or electric motors or anything like that, so they had to be doing it uh, using a purely mechanical system. And I thought, well, let's look up some of those mechanical systems, and... Your standard steam engine, you know, has three three wheels or two wheels usually connected with a rod in between them, and so all three of them will rotate at the same time on the drive wheel. And in most steam engines I was looking up, it seems like they actually power the middle wheel and let the other two just sort of free float with it. I was looking at different valve gear mechanisms, and a valve gear is basically how the steam in the front little compartment, the front bulge that you see right on either side that where the pistons are attached, that actually is a steam piston and it, it takes in steam from the boilers and then uses it to power a piston which in turn goes to the wheels. And I was looking at a few different designs for them. The one that really fascinated me was called the, the Walshirts, I believe, or I, I, I think that's how you pronounce it. But anyways, I'm going to post a pretty cool video uh, down in the description below. It's an animated video for you guys to see. And basically how that design works... It's, well, you know what, this, this is just, this one kind of worked, but this was attempt number one. So let's go look at the, the final one first, but it, uh, it might look a little complicated. It, it kind of is, I guess. Um, it's not really terribly difficult, so the two sensors here are really just to sense the piston positions to move it in and out. So when the piston's fully extended, uh, that sensor will just reset a memory bit in the back. And when the piston's retracted, it will uh, come this way. So we can start with just your basic steam engine, which would just be, you know, this this bar here attached uh, to this center beam here. And you can see there, it's all just free bearings. And so if we turn this piston on, it will rotate the wheels. We don't really have control over the direction that it's going to go in. We can't guarantee that every time we turn on the switch, it's going to go in the same direction. But that's your basic steam engine mechanism. And, you know, it works quite well. Um, you know, obviously having a fair amount of power and decent timing, but again, no control over which direction it goes in. So how the wall shirt system works is it actually puts a second control arm on it, and that's with this piece of suspension here. So this white arm here, as we'll color it, uh, this would be your, your control arm. It doesn't actually provide the power. The power to the system still comes through, well, you know, we'll do this black one here. So this one here, this black arm in the back, that's actually providing the power to the system, but the white arm here just acts as a simple control arm, and it's actually attached to this sort of loop device here, and this loop is just on a free-floating pivot. Uh, if we, we'll just move that out of the way there, so you can see. We can just move this little pin up. No, oh, no, wrong. That there we go. There's the there's this the there we go. I want to put it there. Right. So if we move that pin up above the pivot point there, this pivot here, uh, we'll just paint this nice and yellow so it's easy to see. So this whole loop system is attached to a pivot, which in turn goes down to this white bar down here, which controls the secondary point on the wheel. And all that control arm is doing is giving the wheel the initial push to get it past that initial little sort of. Um, uh, that little like stale point when when the piston is fully lined up like this It's technically in a neutral position. It could go up or down now because of gravity It's gonna want to go down initially, but it could go up and this control arm it just gives you that initial push in one direction or the other and so what happens is as this piston pushes out the valve system, which is represented by this suspension piece, gets acts as sort of like a dampener and you'll see this this bar here this sloped bar will we'll, uh, paint this one blue 
right? So this blue bar will actually move back and forth and it'll move slightly slower at the top than it does at the bottom. And this is represented on the front of the train. And then that will in turn push this pin back and forth, which depending on which side of the pivot's on will determine which way this bar moves initially. And so if we turn this on, uh, there we go. So you can see there, it's pushing it in the one direction. And again, it's just getting it over that initial hump. And then once we lower it down, below the center point eventually it will stop and it'll start going in the other direction and again the same thing so this pivot is now acting in the opposite direction so this white control arm wants to pull it and you've basically created the the wall shirts gearing system so when they would do this on an actual steam train and it blew my mind because this is you know it's really really simple mechanical system i mean well not really simple but it's a very cool uh, mechanical system that handles the task of a, a very complicated you know forward and back electric motor but it does it all mechanically without any gears and all you're really doing is giving it that initial push you can see there once we get past that pivot point it will reverse and start going in the opposite direction and this is beautiful uh, but obviously very very bulky to put on a scrap mechanic steam train but uh, I was really, really happy when I got this working. And so how they would do this in a real train is there, there would be a lever here that would go up and down, not quite as dramatic as this. And it would actually be just attached th by a threaded screw back into the cabin. So the guy in the cabin would sit there cranking this wheel back and forth and basically just screwing in a screw or unscrewing it. And uh, that would in turn raise or lower this arm, which would in turn run the slider. And it's hard to do in scrap mechanic. But depending on the position and the, the closeness, the proximity to the sensor, you'd actually determine the speed of the wheels. And you see, So you can see when we get close to that center point, the wheels will kind of chug more, and then they'll eventually reverse. And so it's really just an awesome, awesome system. Now, I definitely want to make a steam train. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about making a steam train. Uh, I think if I would do a steam train, I would probably use, like, you know, the polygon mod pack to do some rail pieces or something like that. But uh, I don't think I would use the Walshirts mechanism. This mechanism is awesome. Don't get me wrong. It looks super cool. And, uh, you know, it's it's obviously it's a legitimate way to actually reverse uh, a steam engine as they would do it in real life. And that's really what fascinated me. I was so happy when this worked. And uh, actually, it was funny. This started working and I recorded a video of it. And then I quit the world, and when I rejoined, it didn't work anymore. The engine was just chugging like crazy, and uh, I had to adjust a few things, and eventually I got it working again. So I'm not going to upload this to the workshop simply because I don't know if you download it, if it's going to work, or if it's going to have that weird glitch that I was having. So this one I had working, and I have a, uh, a video of it on my phone working, and, uh, and now you can see it just chugs. But before on my phone, it was running smoother like this one is, but uh, now it's all of a sudden become a chugging machine, and I don't know why. And this was using just a piston as a dampener. And so instead, I put a spring on the other side, which does the same effect. Um, but uh, you can see that piston's not hooked up or anything. But yeah, this one became a chugging machine. And then when I tried to, to lower this bar, for example, into the reverse position, see, it still chugs, but it would chug even worse in the other direction. And so I really don't know what happened there. Um, like I said, I do have a very terrible quality video on my phone, like 240p, but, uh, yeah, it, I, I don't really know. I don't know why it was, it was screwing up, and, uh, but this one, this one seems to work now, but again, I don't really want to upload it to the workshop. I just thought it was a really cool thing to sort of have in Scrap Mechanic, and obviously, uh, I am going to try and work on a steam engine at some point in time, and, uh, and do that, because I think that would be really cool to have a steam map. But I don't think I would make a steam engine with uh, with this kind of a forward and reverse mechanism because it is a little bit ridiculous. But uh, I did have a previous version. Just wanted to let you guys know. So it was kind of like, you know, terrible. And you can see there, it also had the chug. And it, yeah, it even fought itself and went back. So I, I went back, revised it, realized this slot had to be a lot longer. And uh, now you have a version that you can seamlessly go from go to stop. And no, see, I went too far up. If you go too far up and you jam that top peg up into the top section, it actually won't reverse it because you're just holding the peg, right? So now you see we're going in one direction. And if we go below that center line, it should flip and start going in the other direction. And there we go. So again, really cool mechanism. I encourage you guys, go check out that video down in the description below. Um, it animates it. It shows it's kind of, it's done with one of those computer talk-to-speak, text-to-speak voices. But uh, it definitely explains a little bit better than I do uh, 
uh, all the pieces of this mechanism and how they work. And again, this isn't an exact sort of scale to scrap mechanic. You'll kind of see where I did a little bit of changes from the animation. But uh, overall, it has the same functionality. But like I said, very impractical for a vehicle. I mean, we need, you know, four blocks of width out from the tires just to make this mechanism. And so we'd have to either do the whole mechanism internally, which then means we'd need some axles and all sorts of stuff like that. Or we'd have to do some other kind of crazy thing and, uh, you know, I, I don't even know, have some really big tires maybe to scale it properly or something. But uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and let me know what you think about doing the Steam Train World. And uh, we'll definitely see about doing that. And uh, make sure you guys hit that like button and hit that subscribe button because uh, this is just really cool. This is honestly one of my favorite mechanical systems just to look at in Scrap Mechanic. I mean, you can just I can just sit here and watch it all day and, and then hit the button. Oh, wrong way. Wrong button. Other way. Like, that is just so cool to me. That you can just flip directions by simply changing the position of this bar. But anyways, make sure you guys hit those buttons down below. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see y'all next time.